What's up, everybody? This is Tech G back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA Tech Plus certification exam. So let's get into it. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the troubleshooting methodology, which is a systematic approach to resolving technical problems in computing. So whether you're fixing a broken application, a malfunctioning device, or a network connectivity issue, following a structured troubleshooting process is key to identifying the root cause and finding the right solution. Also, the CompTIA Tech Plus exam outlines a six-step methodology that will be our focus for this lesson. So let's break down each step, providing examples and tips to ensure you are fully prepared. All right. So the first step in the troubleshooting methodology is to identify the problem. So before diving into solutions, you need to understand what is going wrong. So here's how you can do that. First thing you can do is ask the user questions. If you're troubleshooting for someone else, you want to gather as much information as possible. Ask questions like, when did the problem start? Or what were you doing when the issue occurred? Next, you want to observe the symptoms. So you want to look at the error messages, behaviors, or notifications being displayed. So for example, if a user's computer won't start, does it show any lights, sounds, or error codes? Then you want to replicate the issue. So if possible, try to reproduce the issue to better understand it. Now during this step, you should also establish a theory of probable cause. This means developing ideas about what might be wrong. You want to start with the simplest possibilities before considering more complex issues. So for instance, if a computer won't power on, first check the power cable before assuming a hardware failure. All right. So once you've identified the problem, it's time to establish a theory of probable cause. In other words, based on the information you've gathered, develop a logical explanation for what might be causing the issue. And here are some tips to help you do that. You want to start with the simple stuff. So think about common causes like loose cables, faulty software updates, or recent changes to the system. Do you want to narrow down the possibilities? If you have multiple theories, you want to test the simplest or most likely one first. So for example, if a printer isn't working, check whether it's turned on and connected before diving into more technical problems like driver issues. Now, it's important to stay systematic in your thinking. The idea here is to develop a clear path to potential causes without jumping to conclusions too quickly. Now that you have a theory, the next step is to test the theory to determine the cause. And this is where hands-on testing begins to confirm or refute your hypothesis. So for example, if you suspect the faulty network cable is causing connectivity issues, try replacing it to see if the problem is resolved. If you believe a software issue is to blame, try running an update or reinstalling the application to test whether that resolves the problem. If your theory is confirmed, then move on to the next step. However, if the theory is not confirmed, go back to step two to establish a new theory and test it again. This iterative process is crucial to zeroing in on the correct solution. After you've determined the cause, it's time to establish a plan of action to resolve the problem and implement the solution. And here's how you do it. You need to plan the fix. Once you know what's wrong, you need to decide how to fix it. Make sure your plan is clear, specific, and consistent considers any potential impacts on the system or users that you want to communicate with the users. If the troubleshooting affects others, let them know what you plan to do. This is especially important in a business environment where downtime can impact productivity. Do you want to back up any critical data? So before implementing a solution, ensure that any critical data is backed up. And this is particularly important if the fix involves reinstalling software or making changes that could risk data loss. So for instance, if you identify that a computer's hard drive is failing, your plan might involve backing up the data and replacing the hard drive with the new one. Implement the solution carefully and ensure that the problem is resolved before moving to the next step. So once you've implemented the solution, it's essential to verify full system functionality. You want to make sure everything is working as expected and not just the part that you fixed. Additionally, implement any preventative measures to ensure that the problem does not reoccur. So here's how to verify functionality. You want to test thoroughly. So make sure that the issue is fully resolved by testing it in multiple scenarios. So for example, if you fix the printer issue, try printing from different devices and applications to confirm everything is working. Then you want to implement preventative measures if the problem was caused by a specific action, take steps to prevent it from happening again. So for instance, if a software issue was due to a lack of updates, ensure 
where automatic updates are enabled moving forward. Now, the goal is to ensure not only that the immediate problem is solved, but also that the user can continue to use the system without running into similar issues. All right, so the final step is to document your findings, actions, and outcomes. Documentation is a critical part of the troubleshooting process as it helps others understand what was done and why. It also provides a valuable reference in case the issue arises again. So here's what you can include in your documentation. The first thing you want to include is a description of the problem. So you want to state what the symptoms that you observed and how was the problem identified. Then you want to list the theory and the cause. So what theories were tested and what was determined to be the cause of the issue. You also want to list any solutions that were implemented. So detail the plan of action that you took to resolve the problem. You also want to state any verification and preventative measures. So confirm that the solution worked and note any preventative measures implemented. And you want to list the outcomes, explain the final outcome, including any lessons learned or further recommendations. Ultimately, effective documentation can save time and effort in future troubleshooting scenarios and improve communication within teams. All right, so let's summarize the six steps of the troubleshooting methodology. Step one, you want to identify the problem. So gather information, observe symptoms, and then establish a theory. Step two, you want to establish a theory of probable cause. Develop and refine your theory based on what might be wrong. Step three, you want to test the theory to determine the cause. So test your theory to confirm or rule out potential causes. Step four, you want to establish a plan of action and implement the solution. So plan and carry out the fix, ensuring data safety and user communication. Step five, you want to verify system functionality and implement preventative measures. So test thoroughly to confirm resolution and take steps to prevent reoccurrence. And then step six, you want to document findings, actions, and outcomes. So you want to record everything to provide a clear record of the issue and resolution. By following this methodical approach, you'll be able to tackle a wide range of technical issues effectively, whether they involve hardware, software, or network work problems. All right, so now it's time for our favorite part of the video. This is the check on learning section. So question one, which of the following is the first step in a structured troubleshooting methodology? Is it establishing a theory of probable cause, identifying the problem, establishing a plan of action to resolve the problem, or documenting findings, actions, and outcomes? The correct answer is identifying the problem. So the first step in troubleshooting is always to identify the problem. This includes gathering information, questioning users, and understanding the symptoms to form a clear problem statement before proceeding to other steps like establishing a theory or testing solutions. Next question, after identifying the problem, what is the next step in the troubleshooting methodology? Is it test the theory to determine the cause? establish a plan of action to resolve the problem, implement a solution, or establish a theory of probable cause. All right, so the correct answer would be establish a theory of probable cause. So once the problem has been identified, the next step is to establish a theory about what could be causing the issue. This helps in narrowing down possible causes before testing and resolving the problem. And our final question is, what should you do after you have successfully implemented a solution to the problem? Should you close the ticket immediately? Should you verify full system functionality and implement preventative measures? Should you document findings and outcomes, then walk away? Or should you move on to the next problem without verifying? And of course, the answer is you want to verify full system functionality and implement preventative measures. So after implementing a solution, it is important to ensure that the issue is fully resolved and that the system is functioning as expected. Additionally, implementing preventative measures can help ensure the issue does not reoccur in the future. And this is crucial to confirm the effectiveness of your solution before documenting the process.